I can do you one better. I can show that light can push other light away depending upon how powerful it is. The red light is the weak light and they're both coming through a venturi at the same time. The venturi is straight up and down. Very tight venturi and they're coming down here into it. The green just pushes the red away because it's much more powerful and it's pushing it away due to magnetic fields. Remember I told you that the light can only spin like this up and down? It never spins like that. In this case it is and you will never ever see this anywhere else in your life. Until they finally do their work at Fermilab or somewhere. You see those are barrel rolling. I call it a barrel or roll. This was spinning. Here's what happens. Light is like this. Here's the red coming through. No, 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 no. Spinning slowly this way. Now, I don't know if it's going the same speed as the green, but it's just stretched out, or the green is going much faster. I, I, I can't tell you one way or the other. Because I think when they measure the speed of light, they take white light. I'm not sure. Now, you see these are barrel rolling. So what has happened? This one here is coming through and it's like this and it's spinning real fast. So it's white particles are coming down here much, much faster. They're down in this range. So what do they have to do? They have to push the white particles that they're right next to and roll them. And that's the only reason you would ever see that rolling. You will never see that again. It is unknown to science. All right, Fabian Boulay did this. Uh, Rodney Warren did 99% of the light research, you know, actual experiments. I did some, very little. Um, I had guys working, doing this fabulous stuff. I, I, nobody ever paid them or anything. They were just interested in doing this. And by the time we had so much pushback, well, it was over. Everybody sort of went their own way, and now I don't hear from anybody, but I'd like to, because I think we're getting damn close to getting this recognized for what it is. And this is a breakthrough in atomic physics. It is. There's no other way to put it. Okay, I got a question for you, and I don't have the answer, so maybe you do. When I shine the light at the black, pushed it. When I shine at the light at the white, pulled it. If I sprayed really cold, cold stuff on here, it would go backwards. It wouldn't come the way it's this way it's been spinning. It would go this direction, backwards. So cold pushes. Heat makes it turn this way. Cold makes it turn that way. Think of it that way. Who's pushing, who's shoving? I'm not sure. I believe the white is is it has a polarity to it, which is the white side. So the dark must be the part that's pushing, going this way. So the dark is somehow coming through here. Now don't forget, this is a very little gases in here. Think about what's going on. Because cold is mostly dark. And it, it, most of the extra electrons are gone. There's no extra electrons to, to, to pump into there. The cold will suck electrons out. Cold will suck electrons out. Heat will pump electrons in. Because heat is nothing more than electrons. How they interact with the veins, you figure this out. Because I'm, I'm still trying to come to grips with it, but I think I understand what's going on. But I do think the glass has something to do with the effect or it may not have anything to do with it. I'm starting to think it doesn't have anything to do with it. But when I started to think, it must be taken out some of that radiation, the really high energy particles, because you don't get burnt on the other side of the glass. But it, is it taking out the dark particles at the same time? It could very well be. They could be bouncing back out, and I, I imagine they are. So I'm, at this point, I'm started thinking there is no effect from the glass. Originally, I've been talking about the glass as the cause of this. I don't think so. I think it's just strictly the cause of magnetism. And don't forget, inside here, there's very little gas. All right, so there's very little transfer of 
particles. That plays a part too. You got to know all the little details, otherwise. And like I said, blue will make that thing turn. Blue laser, which is not, this is just cheap. If you had a strong laser, they would make that turn pretty good. But you can see the blue, it's making a turn. All right, the red won't make a turn at all. There's no power to the red. And this is why. Red is down here, it's just no power. Just, all right, as you go up, when you get up here in the blue, zip, that's way up almost into the x-rays and so forth. That's heavy duty stuff. So that's why it pushes. Now, it's only one frequency. When you add up all these frequencies together in white light, she takes it right off. And I can't make it come backwards with the blue. Well, maybe I can. It's just not enough, enough juice to pull the white. But you know that the white will pull that thing powerfully. Of course, this is a pretty powerful light. You see it? So it's, there's virtually no question it's, it's a magnetic situation. One of them is pulling particles out, one of them is pushing particles in. That's the cold versus the heat. Light versus, you know, cold. Okay, my friends, this is Lawrence Livermore. I'm going to try them. Nobody else will, will look at the information I'm showing, which is, is, uh, is hard to dismiss out of hand without even examining it. Now, they're putting a bazillion lasers into one little thing, I don't know, it's some kind of tungsten. I'm not sure what they got. There's a certain pellet they have there, and they're shining a bazillion things into it to try to make it break apart and then come back together, which is not all that hard to do, really. But are, are they getting extra energy back? They claim, yes, they did. But I, for how long and how, at what cost to do this compared to what I have been showing? Now, th as far as I'm concerned, I would like to talk to Lawrence Livermore. I've tried to make contact with him, haven't heard back. And Fermilab is just out of question. They, as far as I'm concerned, Don Lincoln is a gatekeeper, and he's, he's not going to let anybody through that gate. CERN, I can see they're trying to go that same route that I'm showing, and they're putting this block of tungsten in there to hit after six miles going around their ring to drive up, you know, some particles out the other end of a 12 kilogram chunk of tungsten, something like that. Anyway, they're, they're, it's a it's a it's a it's a whole system set up to complicate things so much and to make everything seem so exotic that it's worth throwing billions of dollars in sooner or later don't worry yeah sooner or later sooner or later yeah 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 well I don't see that happen I just don't see it happen they they what they're trying to do they're going to put more energy in to get the same amount of energy back. And it's not going to last for very long. It's just like I said, I think I might have said it in this video. It's just like um, absolute zero. You get down to absolute zero, you got superconductivity because there's no extra electrons. None. So it says, give me all the electrons you can. And it's instantaneously, but it starts to give resistance and there's no more superconductivity. It slows it down. Now, the same thing here. You can fuse it maybe and you get a big blast all of a sudden, but then it's just going to, you're going to have to put more energy in to keep it going, then you're going to get back out of it. It's just not going to work. I, I, I don't think, but this is something I'd love to talk to somebody about. And I'm showing, but the things I'm showing are, are, are not, to, to, you can't dismiss this. This is reality. This was done by us. Rod Warren and I, I this is my theory, Rod Warren did the actual experiments. And these are the particles. And then they split the exact same thing that they're asking for. They're muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. Now it's time to get off the dime and get this thing done. If we could harvest the electricity right there, we should be able to power all kinds of things with this technology. Because it should increase the, the, you know, in other words, it takes 
say one amp or one watt to drive the laser if we can get 10 watts back that's a nine times increase and they say it could a lot more than that and i'm going to have to agree that this thing could be absolutely stunningly powerful because this is nothing but raw electrons and that's exactly what you put in your car there's no way to them whatsoever but they have a hell of a kick all right i love you all talk to people Certainly if you're in college or somewhere, or you have college students or somebody, you know, to, to, to mention it. Have them look at this. This is, this is not just theoretical nonsense to have them go and sit, sit down and do a bunch of calculations. This is actual reality. All right? I love you all. Goodbye.